Yes, yes. Today we're going to sit down with Glenn Keeling, who has a, a medical patient out of Ohio with a very, very sad story. Afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us on a Sunday. And Glenn, thanks for coming on. Hey, thank you, Tom, for having me on. Thank you very much. Hey, um, yeah, no problem. You know, it's our it's why we're here, man. So tell us a little bit about your backstory, man. Um, well, uh, Peggy and I both we, we suffer with with medical conditions. Uh, Peggy has MS um, and among diabetes and a few other things. And I have Crohn's and um, chronic pain. Um, pharmaceuticals just wasn't helping. It was actually hurting us more than anything. So we um, back in uh, late 2016, we saw it, you know, because our state um, legalized cannabis for adult use medically. Um, what state is that again? We're in Ohio, state of Ohio. Um, so we went and got our recommendations to use cannabis um, and went along. Uh, at the time, you know, we both were chapter coordinators and chapter leader of Normal and Suave. Um, we held meetings at our ho home. Peggy and I are both um, ordained ministers and, and marriage counselors also. Um, so we had a lot of that going on uh, in the community. We did a lot of events for people. Um, so like you, you were active in the movement. You were an organizer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we ran a normal chapter um, here in Ohio. So That's you awesome. weren't hiding what you were doing? No, no. We advocated for cannabis, and we had both advocated um, since early of 2014 when we pushed for legalization in 2015. Um, we both were at the front of that. We, we, we ran normal, West Central Ohio normal is back. Um, we ran that for a year and a half. And then you got your medical cards in uh, 2016 when you were able to. Right, correct. Um, I ran for mayor um, that year uh, of our community here and decided that, you know, and just wanted, I wanted to change. I need, we needed a change and things weren't changing the way we wanted. So Figured I'd give it a try from the inside. Um, unfortunately, I did not win. But what I did get was later on, um, our home was raided. Mm. Oh, really? Uh, with, uh, yes. Yeah. So um, despite yeah. having like your medical card, they still came in and raided your home. Oh, yeah. 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 We, we tried to explain to them that night that they come in that, you know, we were medical patients. Um, explained to them that um, I had given um, one of my I, I few people people under me at the time uh, i'd given him medicine yes um, so I, wait I, uh, let's let's unpack how ohio's medical patients program works because every state is a little different and so is ohio a caretaker state yes all right what does that mean in ohio um you can you can be the caretaker of up to five people um, all right so and so as a caretaker can you grow no no, no, there's no growing in Ohio. And is there any, is, is there flour in Ohio's medical program? Yes, yes there is flour, um, but they don't use the flour. You, you can't smoke the flour. You can vape the flour. How do our they program, enforce? Yeah. How do they enforce our, vaping the flour? Our program is wrote that we're not allowed to combust our cannabis. It, we can't apply flame to so it means that we can't roll it and, and, and put it in a bowl. And hmm. It has to be vape. That's the way our law is wrote. Or edibles, our, right? Would that be correct? Or edibles, yes. We can vape it. Um, we are allowed to have the oils, the tenskers, the, the flour. Like I said, um, we're allowed to have everything there is for the program. Um, we have everything available. When you guys were raided, were they, did they ask for your paperwork up front? Were they just, you know, knocking door kind well, or was it more like an invasion? It was more like an invasion. They showed up and said, we have a search warrant and we want all your um, illegal drugs and all your anything that goes along with that. And I said, well, so they we just, they just them. roll up to you. What was <laughs> all your illegal drugs? Uh, yeah. Did they know you well, were a medical well, patient? Yeah, yeah. Well, I tried to explain it here and there's, that's the crazy thing. This happened October 31st of 2017. I mean, this Halloween, um, we had sat outside all you know, evening passed out candy and, and everything else to the community and stuff. And this happened at 9.30 at night, just like an hour and a half after trick-or-treating. 
Oh man. Um, so you think somebody so, smelled something at your house and called the cops? Well, what happened was, is I had given one of my patients, one, one of the people I had given him some cannabis and unfortunately he was pulled over on leaving my house and well, he told him where he got it from, you know, I mean, but you're a caregiver, you. right? Isn't that how it works? He was right. your caregiver. Right. And, and yeah, I was his caregiver. It, and so I, we didn't think we were doing anything wrong. We were yeah. following the law. Um, so, so he had a car too though, crazy. right? Yeah. 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 Um, he ended up getting um, just, he got taken to jail that night, his car impounded. He got out the next, just a few hours later, actually. Um, and his, his, it's all done with his and everything. And he'd been done a long time now. Um, now, the, what was, was there any charge against him? Was his medical card a defense against anything? It was, I, I believe. I don't really, I don't remember what happened with his case. I guess I could look it up and see, but I, I think they gave him non-reporting probation, um, and let it go at that. Are you so? Are you talking to us from your mansion? I mean, like what? Uh, like, are you what the charges? Like Rico? I mean, what's going on here? Why did they come after you and your wife? Like, it's two All sick right. people. Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure. And, and the crazy thing is, it, that night when they came here, um, and honestly, yeah. Once they were in the house, three minutes after they were in the home, they had absolutely everything that they confiscated from us. I, I, what? I mean, I handed it all. What was them. everything? What did they well, get? I, um, Seventy-one grams of uh, cannabis oil, um, and I think right right about two hundred and eighty-three grams of flour. Um, they got a few edibles um, and some tincture. And some coconut oil rub, yes. But Didn't sound like any flour. Yeah, yeah, they get they get floured like two hundred and I I I'm, I don't remember. I think two hundred and eighty some grams of flour. I, it should. It's all everything is public knowledge. It's, it, you can go online and, and search this. But even that flour, um, it's still gonna get processed and extracted eventually. So that's still not something to charge you with, as far as uh, the criminality goes. Well, let's see how they control their supply in Ohio. Uh, can I go as a caretaker? Can I go buy that two hundred eighty grams of flour? Yes, sure. So it was you had like a it was legal medical flour that you would purchase for your patients. It, the thing is, is the crazy thing is, is, is during this whole process, the judge has already ruled that uh, he it made it ruling that my wife and I, at the time of the incident, were dual patients. We were within law, and oh, we're allowed to go ahead and use because we're bo on bond, but we can use what we're being charged for possession of. So we can go to the store and possess what we're being charged for possession of. That's just so ridiculous. I can't believe that the medical law in Ohio doesn't have like an exculpation. And that just means like a somewhat of a get out of jail clause that said, because I'm assuming that it's still illegal to have cannabis possession, but it's also legal to have it because you have medical cannabis. And you're telling me that it seems like at least that in the medical statute, you're not allowed to use that as like a defense to the criminal statute or it's not an exception. They didn't amend the criminal statute. That seems ridiculous from a legislative it standpoint it is really it, it's been really and we've been dealing with this for 810 days now Ugh. um and and it's we're no further today you, you know than we were when the case first began we just had some motions filed again january 6th um, all right who's, who's so do you have representation though in your uh fight against uh mercer county I have a public defender, and my wife has an attorney, yes. That attorney, was it uh, Bruce Keller, I think is the name, the guy that stepped up for you guys? Um, actually, Michael Bryce Keller um, okay. wrote a friend of the court motion um, on our behalf. Good. Um, he, he just said he, he'd been, he's been watching this for a long time, and he, he can't believe that it's still going on. That somebody, you know, the judge hasn't dropped it himself. Yeah. Um, and and they, he just decided that, it was beyond time that, you know, some people need to start stepping up. So he did. He took the first initiative, you know, and I hope there's more people and other attorneys that see this and, and 
you know, well, I mean, I, if there's that me. hole in your medical law and you're active in the normal chapter, you know, this is fodder for legislative uh, language that needs to be added to the, the medical statute to protect uh, similar situated victims like yourself in the future, you know, and then organize, man. All right. I, I mean, I, I just don't know that leave right now. I think I have a total of 10 um, felony four and five possession charges. Wow. I have a felony one manufacturing. I have a felony three child endangerment. I have a felony. Oh four my gosh. Is this all related to the cannabis? Yes. And so, uh, see, that's the thing. They they used to kind of use the child endangerment 10 years ago in Illinois. I remember people using it. But then as these cannabis laws evolve, suddenly it's no longer some type of child endangerment, which very often is then used by bickering parents as a, as a weapon to try to get custody of their children. Uh, so I, I, I assume from that charge that Ohio hasn't done any type of protections for parents that use cannabis, especially. Have, legally actually, it, it has they have. They, it's wrote into our our law is hb 523 that allows adults to use cannabis it is wrote in that 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 uh cannabis alone just possession of cannabis and using cannabis in your home is is not warranted for a child endangerment and that's what we were doing i mean there my our daughter um was out of the house that night because they you know of course they were in and, and they sent her with our son um, and she has never been out of our custody. Um, the children's services that come and done an investigation 27 days after they opened a case against us, they closed it. Well, um, you know, all these cannabis states, as we've become medical, because you guys were recently, you said 2016, right, was uh, Ohio's medical? Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a lot of aches and pains in the beginning of all that crap. As far as even in Washington, as we had medical, we had uh, there's a guy here whose uh, daughter was taken away because of a custody dispute. And, uh, you know, he fought for her and, and won the right. But uh, again, it's the low hanging fruit. You know, at the same time, you've been going through this again. How many days in court have you had since the arrest? Actual days in court. Um, I, I think that we've had an actual three different days that we were actually in court. We've had a total of 26 attorney conferences, um, four, uh, six continuances. Um, man, and, and yeah, and, and this is where we're at. We're still, again, I, I mean, we just recently, um, like it's a January 6th, we just had uh, um, motions to dismiss filed. Wow. And we've been dealing with this for eight. But that's just, I mean, that's something that you're right. And you're getting an, uh, typically I always thought, but I don't do your side of the aisle on the criminal side. And I really don't even get in the courthouse anymore because it's just all corporate what I'm doing lately. Um, trials take forever, like forever. But I thought like criminal trials have more, I think they, the sixth amendment only really applies to them, the speedy trial. And so, you're you're not facing a civil infraction. This is a, a criminal uh, prosecution, right? Yes, correct. Right, and so I thought you were entitled to a speedy trial, and and speedy trial means, I guess, uh, going on three years and change, right? Yes. Um, we had to, and this is kind of weird. The prosecutor at the beginning of this, like three and two hundred and five hundred days ago or so. We, we, at the beginning of this, we asked for all the information. We needed everything that he had, and he kept continuing to drag his feet and drag his feet. Well, it came close to that time where you know, they either had to get us to trial or it'd be a dismissal. Well, um, or it, yeah, it was just, a, you know, I, it wasn't a dismissal. They were just going to take us to trial, and our attorneys did not have all of the information. They didn't have everything that they needed. Hmm. And it was simply sure. because Matt Fox had drug his feet for hmm. a long time on getting everything to them that we ended up having to sign the speedy trial over um, away in order to give our attorneys more time to build our case. Um, and and he has prosecutorial discretion, right? He can just drop the matter. Yes. 
yes, he can. Yeah. But isn't it true for most prosecutors, they want to plea, they want to settle out. It has nothing to do with like actual justice. He's just trying to break you yeah, down. Yeah, he wants to get his numbers like puffed up. Like, you know, that but isn't that a lot of it why they would arrest people and why a lot of law enforcement is usually against legalization? Because then how are they supposed to get their promotion? You know, how are they supposed to get their callers? Well, with with legalization, well, any kind of any drug charge. I mean, you've got and there's still that, and it really sucks, but there's also that civil forfeiture. I, I mean, they're wanting to take our home from us also. Um, and everything, and they're wanting to take our, everything that we have. Um, civil forfeiture. Have, yeah, everything that we have, um, whatever money they had from us, um, the guns, yes, I did have guns in the home. You're an American. Um, in Ohio. Right? Um <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, there we have a whole list of forfeiture stuff, and our home is included in that. And Well, plus uh, the time that you've been fighting for this, every time you have to take a, a day off. Yeah, or, they know who you are. I mean, like, if you're involved in normal in Ohio, they're going to be like, oh, there is he. There he is. You know? Well, we, I, we were involved. Um, we have recently opened up our own chapter. It's the Creative Care Beacon. We are the Ohio chapter of the Human Solution International. Um, oh, let's plug the Human okay. Solution International. We don't do that enough on that show. Um, what is the Human Solution International? Well, we're a grassroots organization um, based for civil rights. Um, we fight for civil rights, and, and cannabis is, is a civil right. Um, right now, we, we support a lot of people. We do letter writing campaigns. We do uh, calling the uh, prosecutors. We call the um, White House a lot, you know, asking for clemency um, for different plant prisoners and uh we it's it's literally a lobbying uh wing for people that have been turned into criminals by our cannabis laws or by our laws that infringe on our civil rights correct yeah how's your court support there, Glenn? what's that How, how's your court support are people showing up and and, and kind of helping you you know like just showing up um we we do have we don't have a lot of people from ohio supporting us unfortunately why do you think that is? I, I I don't want to talk for anybody, and I don't want to point out. I, I just oh, you no I, speculating, I, huh? I I think that I'm a very I'm a very outspoken person, you know. Um, and I I piss a lot of people off just by telling the truth because people don't like hearing the truth about themselves. And I guess I have pushed people away by telling them that they're fucking assholes and they're fake you know activist and and i mean you know ohio's not done you know it is every state you know and i'm so tired of, of a lot of activists being like yay we, we got legalization <laughs> you're you're an idiot i want to choke them you know why are you happy with being legal you know because being having legal has done nothing but allowing somebody to make millions Mm -hmm. Why people still sit in prison and we still get people locked up every single day while somebody's making millions off of our backs. That's yeah. disgusting. And I hate that. Well, yeah. It's, you know, and a lot of people have just complacent and just felt happy. And, you know, they thought, well, we got legalization, so we're done. And, you know, well, there's, I got mine. I'm good. Support. That's what they think. Right. You know, and there's people that need support and we've reached out to trust me. We've reached out because, Peggy and I, we've done a lot of organizations, you know, of events. We did uh, the uh, Cannabis Collation March in, in Cleveland. I, I led like 1,200 people in March. I mean, people know who we were. It's not like, you know, we're strangers to yeah. Ohio activists. They know who we are. And they all know what we're going through. But the court support is, has failed. Uh, uh, we do have people like Connor. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Rhonda Asgard. Rhonda Asgard, she comes. Bill Creedy, he has came. Uh, we're thankful for them people. Tanya Sander has showed up. As sick as she is, sometimes she has showed up. And those are people from Ohio. Uh, we right. got Kim Rupp from down south. Uh, really big shout out to uh, Miss Wolfenberger. She's came to our court um, a few times, and that's awesome. Uh, she's running for council down there where she's at. Oh, wow. Uh, Amy Wolfenberger is, and, and it's really, you know, we do have a few people that's coming out and supporting, but I know that there's more than just seven activists in Ohio. Um, yeah. We've reached out and reached out 
to a lot of people um, to come to court. Support. That's the problem. You know, it, when you have law enforcement coming down on it that hard, um, a lot more activists have come out in Illinois, I'd say, after it's gone legal, simply because they know that they don't have to hide in the corner anymore. Uh, as you are, it's much more difficult to be an activist in Ohio or in Wisconsin, where there's like very, there's no medical in Wisconsin. In Ohio, it sounds like there's very pathetically enforced medical where they're still prosecuting people and they are still prosecuting you. So they're clearly still prosecuting people in that respect. Then you have people that are scared for their own well-being and their own families because it's bad enough they caught you. I don't want to get caught too. I mean, that's kind of, I think the way they feel. So it's a lot more difficult to have solidarity in that. I mean, like it was hard to have solidarity in the unionization movement of the thirties when you could have a union. I mean, imagine if it was a felony to join a union or something like that. I mean, right. it, it would be, it have been much harder to organize. Well, and for the audience, you know, talking about court support, you know, that's one of the things that the human solution, that and jury nullification, right? Where, you know, letting uh, jurors know it's your right to say not guilty, no matter which unfortunately didn't happen for Lance Glore when a, uh, a judge will say this is a, a situation, uh, you need to pay attention to these laws. But if you still don't agree with the law, you know, jury nullification is still your right to say not guilty. But again, with court support, it just shows that the, to the judge and to the jury and, and it represents to the people who are judging that person being on trial that other citizens stand up for that guy or girl you know that's that's the importance of court support you know that's uh, the the physical voting without voting you know i right. think Ab absolutely court support is, is huge and you know um if you know we can't get people to come out and support us there is somebody going through some case somewhere we just encourage people you know through the human solution to reach out and support somebody. You know, we have a, we've got a walk for change getting ready to start off in June. Um, it's a, we're gathering people to walk across the United States for change. And these are the things that we're talking about that we're wanting to change. And those are the reasons we're walking. You know, I'm, I'm my the reason I'm walking is, you know, I'm going to walk for change for the people that can't walk for all the people that are in prison that can't walk in this change, you know, I'm going to walk for them. Uh, How do you I think, uh, where's Ohio when it comes to, so it sounds like Ohio is way behind Illinois where there's no plan for it to be more open or to legalize uh, cannabis use for, for adults. I, I, we do have several groups. We have uh, we grow Ohio that's ran by uh, Robin Morris. Um, she and the, their work, her organization is working on a few petitions for, Ohio to get uh, recreational use, um, and it and the recreational use that they're working on does and will come with home growing. I, I think that that's a huge thing, um, especially for the patients. A, especially oh, yeah. for the patients. Oh God, yes. Yeah. Um, there is a provision in there also for plant prisoners and people that are currently in. Oh, that's in great. I think that really them. helped. In Illinois, that pushed it over the edge where they had that uh, expungement. And I think that's like at the national level where you have the MORE Act and stuff, where they get that justice component into it. Because, I mean, before the show, we were talking about this came about like in the 1930s and so. And then it was a loophole to the 13th Amendment, because if they could make you a criminal, they could make you a slave. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah absolutely. I mean, yeah, if you could. As soon as you catch a number or get a number, you have become the United States slave. You have become a slave. You, I mean, yeah, because like the, the 13th Amendment it. has this clause in it, you know, and it's right there, except as punishment for a crime where they have been convicted. And so, you know, here we are in 2020, and then this doesn't have much to do with cannabis, but uh, it's still an example of it where and in, in, uh, there's this, this story where somebody who's spent time in Mississippi 12 years for having a cell phone. And it's this, um, what's the, the name of the justice, yeah. thing. but it's pits this guy. I mean, it's so, yeah, it's the low hanging fruit of the justice, but it's the, um, it's the way that they can use the laws to turn you not into a man, but a slave. Yeah, and so they've, they've created this law so that they can then enslave you and pay you like prison wages. And what did you do? I had two joints. Yeah. Or take yeah, your well, fucking assets. Or right. take your assets. 
They want you not only to be a slave, but that's not your property because you had cannabis, which was lawful. You had a medical cannabis license. You had medical cannabis pursuant to that license, and they still want to take everything that you have. Right. Yeah. And they. I. And it's just not. It just doesn't stop there. I mean, um, any any time that we would have to go to prison, and I. I honestly, I really do hope that our motions are heard this time by the judge, and, and we do get it dismissed because with Peggy's health, um, and what's really bad is this is her second set of MRIs in a row that she has gotten new brain lesions and plaque moving down her spine. Oh um, man. Which is, is, you know, before this happened, we, we, with cannabis, we were able to, to keep that. I mean, she didn't have this issue. Um, since this case has happened, her health has decreased. Think um, about that's something as well. I mean, that is real. I mean, and, and I don't mean to sound new agey here, but your body responds to stress, you know? Yeah. And so how much stress has your family been under since Halloween 2016? It's 2017. Oh, I mean, a, a lot. I mean, it was uh, tremendous. We, we're in fear of every time, you know, we you know, if we hear a car door, we don't know if it's the attorneys coming and tell us that we have to move out of our home, that they're prosecuting us. Uh, we don't know, you know, if they're coming to, to revoke our bond. I mean, we're on bond and uh, it's it's a fear of every day that, you know, for any reason, it doesn't matter. I mean, you're you're at the mercy of the court system and, and of the prosecutor. And anytime he catches a bird in his ass or anytime he, you know, he wakes up on a sad morning, you know, and he can revoke our bonds and we'll go to jail. Um, and let's let's know. remember that you you stood up and and were uh, a target because you stood up and, and voiced uh, uh, for this plan. You were an advocate and you've been going through this for over eight hundred days. At the same time, four people got off in goddamn uh, uh, Columbus. Uh, uh, yeah, up in uh, Toledo. Yeah, four people. They got off with uh, reporting probation. They dropped everything down to misdemeanor uh, possession charges. Um, and that they one, that everything could... on the girls, and and uh, it was just two guys that ended up with just a minor um, infraction. Yeah, and that's what I was gonna point out is it's like this injustice with mixed with sexism, mixed with uh, uh, misogyny. It's like these two guys. Now, honestly, I'm not a fan of face tattoos, but uh, you know, these who guys... is a fan of face tattoos? Okay. Seriously, guys, uh, who... <laughs> fans of face tattoos, smash those thumbs up. I'm yeah. not a fan, right. but these guys clearly. I mean. They look kind of rugged, thuggish, and, and you're like, man, but they got off. But the, they had to take uh, uh, possession charges, which was like minor, and the women got let go. It's like, what kind of fucking shit is this? They were all in the same car. It's right. The and here, you know, and, and here's what, man, this is going to really piss a lot of people off. They, they, right way back at the beginning of this, they came in. My wife had wasn't even charged at the beginning of this. Um, they came and said, here, listen, we'll be nice. What we'll do is we'll drop all the other charges and everything. You plead to the possession of the 10 guns. We'll have felony possession of the guns. You plead to the felony possession of the guns. We'll drop everything and we won't charge your wife or, you know, we'll, we'll be nice about that. We'll get looking and, and that, that carries the felony charge of a gun in the state of Ohio is a one to three years per charge. Well, they took 10 guns out of my house. Um, so, so were I, these guns uh, legal? Uh, yes. But then, how can they charge you for having legal guns, like Second yeah. Amendment and stuff, right? Yeah, right. Absolutely. Uh, so I told them no. Um, so the prosecutor decided to charge my wife, and he has been dangling her in front of me ever since. And and the only reason that. The but then, what's the gun was, charge? I don't get the gun. I like, guess you uh, you said. These are your personal guns that you had your you legally own, right? Well, in the state of Ohio, or I guess any state, if you get possession in charge of drugs, it doesn't matter any drugs, and you have a firearm in the use of a felony, um, it is a it they, it's added on. Um, and it gives in. So they just, this is like that prosecutorial, uh, the, the, what does it call it? The full weight of the law. Like, you know, throw the book at them, that kind yes. of stuff. They're using this as absolute leverage for you to take some type of plea because 
because they found legal guns at your place, that was an enhancement or maybe even an additional crime to your your possession charge. Yeah, it's a but threat to the charge. But even a threat of taking your assets, because I'm I'm sure this house was yours before you got involved with uh, medical marijuana. So yeah. it's like to, to 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 try and say one plus one is is two. So you got guns, you're a bad guy, and we're taking your house because this is how you paid for your house. Are you, are you fucking serious? Right. Well, to be my wife, my wife bought this house before she was even my wife. Before she we were even to get, she bought this home back in 2010 before we even met. So. Um, she bought it with disability money. So, I, I mean, this had nothing to do with any kind of uh, anything. And, and Bill, yeah, they got cash from us and they got just a little over $7,000 in cash, but they're not going to tell you that that $7,000 in cash came out of six different envelopes. Um, there was our granddaughter's money, our daughter's money. We did have a family vacation money envelope. We had a vacation envelope for our honey. See, this is just a plug for my former clients. Banks. That money would have been safe in a bank. Yeah. Well, but you can't. being on disability, you really can't because you can only have X amount of dollars in a bank mm. account because oh. of disability. So it's kind of, you know, you're kind of, man, you know, it, it's really – Yes, yes, a lot of things look and point towards, oh, okay, yeah, you were a bad person because you've got guns in your house and you've got an excessive cash and you've got... Honestly, 7000 But yeah, there, there shouldn't be crimes against having legal guns and, 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 and money in your house. This is America. Do you have a helicopter pad back there? I mean, what... Is, what no, no. <laughs> just say you're not just... Uh, 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 you're not El Chapo, man. Like this no, is such I'm clearing it right now. No, I'm not El Chapo. <laughs> Just checking, no, you know. Not even close. Um, you know, I, I mean, we were. I mean, it's it's. We had a vending machine service before this. Um, you know, I was, I was a consultant for several different places. You know, we we did well. I mean, we're not. I mean. We weren't at the bottom rung, but we weren't up there, you know, living, you know, off of a throne, you know, drinking out of gold cups or nothing like that. I mean, we didn't hurt for money, but, you know, we didn't frivolously go and spend either. But but since this case, you know, it is I, I I'm it sucks to think of how much money that we are out through this case. Yeah, where we have that's to right. Start over at now. And they're just trying to turn you into a slave because then let's say they yeah. throw you into jail. They can pay you. How much do they pay a day in jail? A buck? No, not even? No, not even. Not even that. No, because I think it, I'd it, start at the bottom rung. I think like ten cents an hour, maybe. Yeah, but I don't think it's not I'm just not even man. pretty. So I might get eight cents. <laughs> Somebody will take. Oh no! So I mean, fuck. And then we have to pay uh, you know, twice because now, like, as opposed to you being a contributing member to society that is helping this industry spread across, uh, you know, from coast to coast, especially in the heartland Ohio, uh, where they need consultants to get the product to the people where it belongs. Um, yeah, we're just going to, we're going to, how much money have we spent? And by we, I mean the citizens of Ohio uh, on your prosecution, you know, and we have I mean, to hire that prosecutor. Work. He's got to work. Judges got to be hired. Today, I think that uh, we, it, I think today it was uh, 78,000 a piece. Shit. But see, and I, I don't think it's also the, with the intention is because of Ohio. I I think you're also going against uh, law enforcement lobbyists, law enforcement uh, interest. Um, and honestly, dude, I think they're trying to make an example of you. They're coming at you because you're a target. You know, uh, well, you're taking their bread and butter. Oh, did I did I freeze? No, you're still, I, hear you. okay. I got a little warning. <laughs> um, nice. Yeah, we have a petition online, you know, they're on Facebook. Most of our stuff is on Facebook, but we do have a petition there. And you can, it's, I'm really easy to find, you know, Glenn Keeling, you know, look me up there on Facebook, friend me. I have a petition there that, you know, sent, is sent to the prosecutor. Um, we also have a phone number that we ask people to call the prosecutor and let him know that, you know, this is unjust. And um, we're not. We're not El Chapo, like you said. We're, we're not drug dealers. We're not, you know, we're not here getting rich um, on somebody Your else's Your patients medicine. helping them get their medicine. We were. That's. I mean, we, 
we did not think we were doing anything wrong. We thought we were following you exactly weren't. what we were told. The to thing do. that really chaps my ass out of this too is like I, Acreage Holdings comes out of Ohio. Fucking Acreage Holdings, the largest licensed conglomerate with John Boehner on its board. And that's where you're at. You know, you're in Ohio and it's like, okay, well, they're going to take all the money, but they aren't going to give it to any of the patients who need it. And they're going to like harass the patients and try to throw them in jail because they were doing what they were allowed to do by their license. Right. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm really grateful for Michael Bryce Keller, um, him writing that friends of the court motion. Um, that was really amazing and awesome of him. Um, Peggy's attorney is a really good attorney too. It's Michael, or I'm sorry, Eric Allen from Columbus. Um, he's a really good attorney. My attorney is um, Jim Tesno. He is right across the street from the courthouse. Um, but he is a good attorney. How is the Mercer County Courthouse? Because I've been to the Mercer County Courthouse in Illinois. It's all right. It's big and dumb. <laughs> <laughs> they are i think the reason why they make courthouses big and dumb as you call it is so that you believe it's authority yeah and so like we have this social contract with with the people and the government through this magic of laws and so if you go into a big imposing building where a person in a black robe and a hammer uh, yeah. makes your life something or something else. Well, it is an intimidating building. I mean, it, it's big granite. You know, most of it's, you know, block and, and yeah. it's not pretty. And, you know, and you kind of, even when you go up to pay your taxes, it's kind of intimidating walking up to it. They got them big, heavy doors. And I mean, it's intimidating to go to the courthouse to begin with, to be a yeah. criminal going to the courthouse. It's different when you're a lawyer, let me tell you. It's uh, <laughs> it's more like going to the club. It's like, hey, Phil, what's going on, man? So, Glenn, do you have a public defender? Is that what you have? Yes, sir. Yep. So you made so much money selling weed that they give you a public, a public defender. defender. Well, yeah. didn't they take all your money? Yeah. There you go. Because $7,000 is a heck of a retainer. You know, um, especially for a criminal matter um, like this, perhaps. I'm not sure. I don't practice crime. I can't quote you on that. And um, I can tell you what we were quoted. Uh, I mean, oh, yeah. How much? We got a couple, we got a couple of 30,000. I think we got a 50,000. I'm going to have to raise my um, prices, everybody. I think the highest one, and I, I almost passed out, he wanted $85,000 up front to take on this case for us. Wow. I just, I was, but what yeah, is the it, lowest heart... ones I think was like 30,000. Um, that's an average bid for what you were facing. Dang. Yeah. And that's even being part of an organization like normal, like no offense. I mean, everybody has this expectation that normal has all these lawyers and everybody's, but like with Tom's case, he's not law. He, he, he's, he's business. Right. So it's like, uh, yeah, and I was, I was quoting seven grand. <laughs> Shit. I'd be out of business. <laughs> but but, uh, but well, this... that's why we're not with normal um normal yeah. we we had to go away from normal the human solution international is is an amazing group of people they they some great support support for us they've done a lot of reddit letter writing campaigns and have helped get people to court for us um so i mean it's not like uh we're in a, well, I mean, we got the human solution with this. So, I mean, we're really thankful for all of them. Well, you got an important uh, story for sure. I just wish we had more people coming to court, you know, actually showing I, up. I tell you, man, it's the fear. Court. It yeah. is like because that they're coming after you as a medical patient who actually has a license to do what you were doing. And they're trying to throw you away for years. That's and they've taken up. all your stuff and they're threatening to take your house. That's enough to chill everybody who would want to come out and support you. You're probably going to see some support in the letter writing and online because that is less risk to the person taking that activism. But, oof, you know, it, and it's and that's that again, it gets back to that. This this prohibition of cannabis is the slippery slope to slavery because oh, yeah. it's just going to it's trying to catch you. And then as soon as they've caught you, they can put you in there and um most of them are going to be black and brown. Yeah, I think any of them is, and it, it is sad. It's still that way, and it, and it is. And it, and yeah, and that was that was uh, you know when we shared 
this article here uh, re- drafted by this Lawrence Pitts guy that I'll see on uh, he's he's very often on the, the the television and so he'll be a talking head sometimes I mean like you see him all the time this one's from the Miami Herald itself but he actually quoted um he quoted what was his name uh, actually Richard Pryor from Peoria I'm trying to find it you know they, they 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 give out stuff like it was lunch and the problem oh there it is I'm looking at the wrong article that's why uh, there it is. It's uh, this. This is Pitts right there, and he actually quoted uh, Richard Pryor. So Richard Pryor famously said that courts give black folks times like it's lunch. You go down there looking for justice, and that's what you find. Just us. So you know, shout out to Richard Pryor, a nice. But you know, Ohio, as well, Ohio's suffering from uh, being a drive-through state too, as far as the uh, the drug trades go. You know, I think a lot of these law enforcement still have a hard on it because. They were my biggest targets when I used to troll the police was the Ohio State Patrol because they were very braggish about all these arrests that they did that weren't really arrests. I mean, right. not yeah. bad guys. Ohio, Ohio for a long time was a drive, like you said, drive through state, you know, because they were taking it up to Chicago, up through, up right straight, straight up 75 through here, taking it up to Detroit, up into Michigan, over to Chicago through, uh, what is that, 23 over there. Um so, I mean, yeah, Ohio for a long time was a drive through, you know, drug route for a lot of going north to Michigan. And wow. people do, you know, still, you know, even though, you know, Ohio has, has a program of stuff, people are still taking a chance and driving across the border and going to Michigan and getting their stuff and coming back. And Oh, yeah. I mean, do what you want to do. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying, you know, don't, but I mean, I'm saying don't do it. <laughs> like, you know, don't. You know, do whatever you want, though, but don't do it. Um, it yeah, but that, that patchwork thing, of you know? laws where you have a crime on one side of it and then somewhere else it's quasi-legal. Like, even in Illinois, it's quasi-legal. I mean, heck, even in Washington State, Miggy, aren't they – didn't they just introduce a bill in Washington State to try to limit the concentration of extracts? Man, our legislators need to get the heads out of their asses. Why no? So, like, what's going on over there? Why are and who's behind it, and and what are they trying to do? So, I'm not sure exactly who. I haven't dug into it, but right there, House Bill 2546. They're proposing to change the uh, the max. I, I can't even say this with a straight face, but I know the max concentrates 10. percent I mean, what it, we are. That, one of, that's what they said. Like at the bottom of it, you know, this 10 percent will not get you high. So it's a number that makes no sense, and this low per- potency would require more dilutants. I just so, don't get how a non-consumer gets a hair up their ass, but they're going to say, okay, you know what? Uh, all of a sudden, this has been legal for... They said it was psychosis. Man. They said it caused more psychosis. You know, I think that I think it should be a qualifier. I, I think that if you're going to sit on any kind of cannabis, um, you know, panel, board, you have, regulatory... Right, yeah, yeah you, you have, must have some knowledge of cannabis. You must have a user on the board. That's yeah. really what it should be. It's like, okay, here's another board of people that don't use cannabis. And they actually had the bottom of, uh, what did they, they um, here, I'll share it again. So it says crazy week in the legislature. So yeah, a lot of these are Dems, man. It's, yeah, you know, it's it. there's an R, there's an R, yeah. but. My Lynn Ty, she's a Dem. Tanya's a Dem. Tina's a Dem. Luann, lots of women too. And Kelly. again, the reefer madness bullshit about psychosis. Because I mean, every advocate's had this fucking conversation where, yeah, you know what? If you have a mental issue, it might. I think it also needs education. Yeah, buddy. Uh, if you haven't ever smoked a joint, you might get paranoid. Remember that. <laughs> educate people that paranoia is one of the side effects so that as they are smoking the joint, they're not like, Oh my God, I'm freaking out and I'm seeing bats. No, no, no. You're probably just paranoid and scaring yourself, bro. Take a breath. People work. I I honestly think that they, you know, has to have, have somebody on there that knows something about cannabis. Yeah. You know, do they have caps? Do they have limitation caps? Uh, Glenn in Ohio, do they have like limitation caps for extracts? Oh, yeah. We have a 70% cap here in Ohio. So, like, you can't get, like, like. all right. So, some of the vape pens that I get, they'll be in the 80s, 90s of total uh, cannabinoids. So, do they have vape pens in Ohio? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and the thing with that is, is yeah, we, we can have over 70%, but we it 
the more you have in percent, the less you have in weight because it has to balance out to where you're not allowed to have so much. Um, 70% is our cap. If you get a gram, it's going to be 70%. If you get something that is, say, like you said, 80%, mm-hmm. it's going to be somewhere around weight wise of like uh, 0.68, 0.69 to maybe 0.72 of a gram. Hmm. So, do they have dispensaries in Ohio? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. How do they package and label their product then? Just like that. Hmm. They they wait they tell you. Um, I wish I had a package to show you. Um, nope, that's not one. Uh, yeah, they they have it all printed right on there. You know the milligram age and and the actual weight and and what you're getting and everything. Are there dispensaries um, in your area? There's one that's probably like thirty minutes from me. Yeah. So as you face prosecution, your state has dispensaries where people are just going in and buying their medical cannabis as opposed to you were servicing uh, your caregivers. Yeah, and like what happened to your patients then too, you know? Um, no, I don't have any more. <laughs> I don't have any anymore. I don't have, we don't have a lot of things anymore because of this case. Um, sure. We we had a nice, like I said, we, we had a nice vending machine business that, you know, we you know, we weren't rich or nothing, but, you know, we, we did well. I mean, you know, we were all right. That We don't have that no more. We, we, we did go and do things that we don't no more because of this. Um, yeah. This case no, has taken a lot from us, yeah. honestly. Yeah. So, uh, no but fun. yeah, it is nice that we do have a dispensary that's just, you know, right up the street from us. Um, and even though we're still being charged with the possession and use of cannabis, it's, it's still nice that we can possess and use cannabis. <laughs> Glenn, how can people help you guys? Hey, you guys can find me on Facebook. It's really, really simple. I am the uh, chapter leader of the Creative Care Beacon, the Ohio chapter of the Human Solution International. Or you can just simply give me a call, and my phone number is 419-863-0498. Cool, dude. You know, I really do want to thank you for coming on. I mean, that's one of the things that we like. I I kind of look at this show in a couple of purposes. And one of them is like educational based to help people get uh, information so they can determine if the industry is right for them and what type of happenings and going on is in the industry day to day. But then also it's this archival where we get to talk to and the, for the movement, you know, where we get to talk to people that have been victimized and marginalized and injured by our cannabis laws so that we know how to fix them and amend them in the future and then also r- repair the harms that we've done. And I think Illinois is kind of leading the way on that. But I'm hey, sorry, dude. Man, that's absolutely amazing what you guys have done. I, I'm, I'm glad that you guys have, you know, put that amendment in there that, you know, you think about the plant prisoners and. I think that, you know, if people are going to continue to push for legalization, I think that they need to add that in there because we cannot forget about these people that are serving time for a dime bag or for a joint. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And, and, and then they make the industry so expensive to get into. And so, yeah. like, these people yeah. that you've taken everything from and then enslaved and punished – and then the industry costs millions to get into because of the regulations they put on it and the security they put on it and then the illegality at the federal level so you can't get banking or anything. You know, it's right. just for dick. All right. Um, also, my wife, Peggy Kimmel, you can find her. Um, you can find everything on her page as you can find on mine. So, yeah, you can reach out to either one of us. Um, we appreciate and welcome all the help and support we can get. Cool. We'll put and some I links to the uh, your Facebook page down uh, in the description after we wrap this show up. But, you know, thanks for joining us again on another episode of...